In this video, I want to bring some unity and hopefully some clarity to the various right-hand rules associated with finding the direction of the magnetic field produced by a little current element, a full current segment, or even a loop of current. The origin of all these right-hand rules is in the cross product of the Biot-Savart law. So the Biot-Savart law relates the magnetic field contribution, dB, at some location to the current element producing that magnetic field contribution. So there's a magnitude of this, and there's a direction associated with the cross product. And so it's the direction that we're going to talk about. The direction of the magnetic field will necessarily be the direction of this cross product. So finding the direction of the magnetic field produced by this little bitty current segment amounts to finding the direction of the cross product of the current at that location and the unit vector r hat pointing from the current element to the location of the magnetic field that we're trying to find the direction of. So let's do that. There's a few different ways of implementing the right-hand rule. I'll show you two of them. So if I want to find the direction of the magnetic field contribution here, made by this little current element. I stick my fingers in my right hand in the direction of the first vector of the cross product, that is the I vector, curl them into the R hat unit vector, and my thumb points in the direction of the magnetic field uh, contribution produced at this location. So that direction is out of the board. I can do that a different way. Here's another implementation of the right-hand rule, the three-finger method. Stick your first finger in the direction of the first vector, that's the I vector, the current vector. Second finger in the direction of the R hat unit vector. And your thumb, trying to pull it out, it's coming out of the board, points in the direction of the magnetic field uh, because that's the direction of this cross product. So, no matter how you slice it, whichever your preferred implementation of figuring out right-hand rule direction is from a cross product, no matter how you do it, the cross product of the current vector and the R hat unit vector is out of the board at this location due to this current element. Now, we could do this for other points along the wire segment. Let's imagine one right here. So if I want to find the direction of the magnetic field contribution at this point due to this wire segment, I've got a you know, start with the current that's here, put my fingers of my right hand in the direction of the current vector, curl them into the direction of my new R hat vector, and my thumb points in the direction of the magnetic field uh, contribution at this location out of the board. Note, I had to make a new R hat unit vector because R hat unit vector is defined as the direction pointing from the current element producing the magnetic field to the location that you want to know the magnetic field. So the contribution from this one and this one with regard to the magnetic field at this point, both of them are outward. And if you do a similar thing, a similar setup for any point along the straight wire segment, they will all, at this location, produce a magnetic field contribution that's out of the board. Fantastic. So now, we can imagine looking at this from another point of view, and this will get us to our second right-hand rule. So this is the original right-hand rule for magnetic field direction. It comes from this cross product, not through any magic, but just basically using the right-hand rule associated with any cross product. Okay, so now we're going to take it to the next step. Imagine looking along the current from the end. So the current's going this way, imagine looking from this way, like that. Now, I'm just going to sort of three-dimensionalize this. The current's going this way, and I'm looking along it, and I see that the magnetic field up here, so according to what I've just worked out, is pointing out of the board. Now, for me, looking here, it's to the right. So now imagine taking this whole thing and going like this. So now the current, looking at it this way, imagining I'm looking at a current going into the board, and the magnetic field above that current is to the right. And that would go for any current element pointing into the board along this wire. That's just a self-consistent translation of this picture 
from a new vantage point where I'm looking this way. Now we better check that. Let's check. It. So we'll make a new, so our current direction, so we got some somewhere along this wire, we've got a little DL. It's carrying a current vector I into the board. Now, from that current element pointing to the direction where we want to know, or sorry, the location where we want to know the magnetic field, there would be an r hat unit vector. So that's a unit vector pointing from my little current element toward the location I want to know the magnetic field. Now, it could be pointing this way or this way, but no matter how you slice it, uh, it's got a component that way. Great. So I'm going to take the cross product of a vector, the I vector, the current vector that's going into the board with this R hat unit vector. Fingers in the direction of the current, curl them into R hat, and my thumb points to the right, just like that. So it checks out when we redo it. Now, from this vantage point, it's easy to do look at the magnetic field direction at different points around the wire. So now imagine I've got a little current element right here. I'll have an R hat unit vector pointing from the current element toward a new location where I want to find the magnetic field. Da, 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 da. R hat, the cross product of the current vector and my new R hat unit vector. Well, fingers in the direction of the current, curl them into the direction of R hat unit vector, thumb points down. So that makes a contribution to the magnetic field that way. And of course, every IDL along this current that's you know going into the board will produce one of similar direction, just as we discussed above here. Uh, if you prefer, you could still use your other implementation of the right hand rule. First finger in the direction of the current vector, second finger in the direction of the R hat unit vector, thumb points down, meaning the magnetic field contribution at this point is downward. You could repeat this process for other points around the wire. I'll leave that as an exercise for you. And you get these results. And then you could fill in the results to other places in between. Basically, you'll get that the magnetic field lines will point, basically make circles around the wire. So that is what gives rise to what we might call the second right-hand rule associated with magnetic field direction. Stick your thumb in the direction of the current. Your fingers wrap around in the sense of the way that the magnetic field is basically bending around the wire. So the whole purpose of what the fingers are doing is to tell you whether these vectors are going this way around the wire or whether they're going this way around the wire. So that's the full burden of what the fingers have to do. It's not some precise determination. So if you stick your finger, your thumb in the direction of the current, your fingers are wrapping this way, then I know the magnetic field direction up here is to the right, over here is down, down here is to the left, and on this side is up, and so on. If, on the other hand, if, if, if the current were coming out, I would stick my thumb, of my right hand, of course, in the direction of that current, everything would be wrapped around in the other direction. So if the current were coming out, I'd have a field to the left here, a field down here, a field to the right here, and over here a field that's up. Okay, so note this right hand rule with the thumb in the direction of the current and the fingers wrapping in the sense of the magnetic field, giving, telling you which way the magnetic field is basically going around the wire. That's not an original right hand rule, that's a right hand rule that's based on a result from the right hand rule that's in the cross product. So the logical process is that you start with this right hand rule, you build up this rule, and then people came up with this other shortcut right hand rule. Okay, so now, so, so now we have two right hand rules on the table at this point. The first one is the original right hand rule associated with the cross product. You might call that the fundamental right hand rule. We have a derived right-hand rule, a shortcut right-hand rule, uh, that's only specific to straight current segments. Stick your thumb of your right hand in the direction of that current segment. Fingers will wrap around in the sense that the magnetic field is wrapping around the, the segment. Okay, now imagine a loop of current. We could either use our fundamental right-hand rule associated with the original cross product, 
or the derived right hand rule to get yet another right hand rule. So here we go, let's take these in turn. Let's imagine going with the fundamental right hand rule associated with this cross product to find the direction of the magnetic field just at the center of this loop carrying a current I that's going uh, counterclockwise. So that means at this location, the current is this way. So I stick my, now, if I want to find the direction of the magnetic field at this location, I need to put, draw a unit vector uh, from the current element that's producing the magnetic field to the location where I want to know the magnetic field. So my r hat unit vector points this way. So stick my fingers in the direction, fingers of my right hand, in the direction of the current, curl them into the direction of the r hat unit vector, my thumb points out, indicating that this little current element produces a magnetic field here that is out of the bore. Now, let's check at this point. Maybe it's a different direction. I want to find the direction of the magnetic field contribution at this point due to this little current element. Well, here at this point, the current is going to the right. Now I need to draw a new r hat unit vector pointing from the current element that I'm considering producing the magnetic field to the location that I'm trying to find the magnetic field. So here's my r hat unit vector. Fingers in the direction of the current, curl them into the direction of r hat, thumb points in the direction of the magnetic field, again outward. So if you do this all the way around the wire, you'd see that at the center of the loop, every little single contribution uh, to the magnetic field from any point on the loop is outward. Ah. So that's kind of cool. Uh, now we could have gotten at that another way. Oh, first let me show you, you know, if you want to use the three finger right hand rule implementation, first finger in the direction of the current, second finger in the direction of r hat unit vector, thumb points outward, meaning that this current element uh, produces a magnetic field outward right here. And you could check that for yourself here if you prefer the three finger right hand rule method. Okay. Now, so that's using the fundamental right-hand rule associated with the cross product in the situation of the loop. We could use our shortcut developed for a straight wire segment. For example, right here, stick our thumb in the direction of this little current segment, fingers wrap around in the direction of the magnetic field. So that would mean over here, the magnetic field would be in. Behind this little current segment, the field would be the left. Over here, the center of the loop, the magnetic field be coming out. And over here, the magnetic field contribution would be uh, this way, to the right. But we're interested in it right here. So stick thumb in the direction of the little current element, fingers wrap around. In this region right here, the magnetic field is coming out. We could do that here. Current this way, whew, ah, field is out. Current this way right here, down, field is out. And down here, current is this way, wrap my fingers around in the direction of the magnetic field, out. So using this shortcut right hand rule for each little bitty segment, we get that for each little bitty segment, the magnetic field at this point is out of the board, just like we got from the original right hand rule. This observation, the fact that if you have a current that's going counterclockwise, the magnetic field of the, at the center of the loop, as you look at the loop, is coming outward, cause people to then make yet another shortcut right-hand rule. So the third right-hand rule, the shortcut for loops, goes like this. Curl the fingers of your right hand in the direction of the, of the current going around the loop. Your thumb will point in the direction of the magnetic field at the center of the loop. So if I want to know the direction of the field at the center of the loop, follow the current with my fingers in my right hand. My thumb points outward, meaning the direction of the magnetic field at this point is outward. Okay, so now we have three right-hand rules. The first one is a fundamental right-hand rule associated with the cross product. The second one is based on the results of applying that in multiple ways to a wire segment. So then we got the second right-hand rule uh, associated with a straight wire segment or even a straight current element. Stick your thumb in the direction of the current uh, and your fingers wrap around in the sense of the magnetic field. From that, or going all the way back to the first one, you can then develop a third right-hand rule only for loops in which you curl the fingers of your right hand in the direction of the current, 
your thumb points in the direction of the magnetic field at the center of the loop only. Great. So some of the confusion that arises is the different roles your different digits play in all these right-hand rules. There's a secondary source of confusion. Uh, which right-hand rule are you using? Are you using this one or are you using this one? Are you using a combination of both? If you keep in mind what, that all these right-hand rules are one developed on the other, that might help you keep that straight. The first right-hand rule is based on the cross product. The second right-hand rule is a shortcut based on the results of that. The third right-hand rule is yet another shortcut for yet another specific situation. All right, so I hope, while this is a long video, I hope this will help bring some clarity to both the usage of the right-hand rules for finding the direction of the magnetic field due to various current distributions, and also the interrelation between, interrelationship between those right-hand rules. They're not a bunch of magic rules. They're one built systematically on top of the previous one, all coming back to the cross product in the Biot-Savart law, uh, which relates uh, a current element to the magnetic field contribution that it produces. Thank you.